What up, y'all? Rap Critic here, and this was a request by Arkle. And if you want to make a request, hit up ko-fi.com slash rapcritic for reviews and music live streams, as well as patreon.com slash rapcritic to get this and all other material I do first, as well as join the RC Discord and get access to private streams and music sharing nights. So let's talk about a sample that was used a lot. Because I'm sure most of you watching this have no idea who In Too Deep is, and you probably haven't even heard this song before, but I bet you know the sax part. Taken from the song Darkest Light by the Lafayette Afro Rock Band, and of course famously sampled in the 90s booty club classic Rump Shaker by Rex and Effect. You are listening to the sounds of... Now, most of the time when people flip this sample, uh, they leave it in the same rhythmic place as the original sample is, uh, which is to say the little snake charmy bit happens, and then just a half a beat before the drums hit, it holds on the final note. It's used that way pretty much every time it's been sampled, from Public Enemy's Show em What You Got to Jay-Z's, well, Show Me What You Got, most people just loop it and leave it, with the exception being Ice Cube's Friday, which does a flip on it that makes it almost unrecognizable. But listen to the placement for the sample in today's song, Back to the Hotel. Yeah, you hear how the snake charmy bit is now starting on the downbeat of the rhythm? That uh, that just doesn't work as well for me. I don't know about you, but uh, that just seems like a bit of a step down from the original version's feel. Because the little snake charmy bit is supposed to be the lead into the drop. The melodic bit kind of builds up the energy for the drums to pay off. But with this, the sample feels like it's just kind of stagnant in the groove of the beat. And sure, the James Bond-like rolling guitar underneath is cool and adds some life in there, but that sax placement still feels not as satisfying to the ear. It comes off like someone who wanted to flip the sample the same way they'd heard it before, but they didn't know what to do that would make an instrument play before the beat starts on their music production program, so they just gave up and had the sample start on the one of the beat. And you can tell they know it's getting a little stale by the end because they try to do stuff in the production to kick things up a notch, but it just doesn't work for me. Okay, guys, playing the sample more isn't what's gonna make it sound fresher. Although, I actually like it when the sample drops out for the verses and other stuff happens, like the guitar bit and the beeper sample. And oh yeah, for those too young to remember, beepers were a thing that told you someone wanted to call you. You couldn't call them back though, you just had to hope there was a payphone in your area, and also hope that you had enough change in your pocket to return the call. So yeah, remember that convenient way of living next time someone starts pining for the good old days of the 90s. But when these sounds are happening is when you gotta deal with the rap verses. And look, they're not awful, they're just, they're just not particularly interesting. And sure, I get that these guys aren't trying to be hyper-lyrical guys or anything, they're just trying to be your average party boys chasing skirts and getting wasted. But even so, you can still put some effort into it, ha have some punchlines, a funny story, some interesting wordplay, just something to make it worth coming back to as a track, but unfortunately, that's just not the case. Like, they bring up some stuff people from their region might know, like the Purple Chongos drink or the names of places, but for the most part, it's just not that engaging from line to line. Well, panty sipping is a weird way to say eating pussy. At least I think that's what that means, but I have never heard that phrase before. I mean, girls' panties do get wet when they're turned on, but you have to, like, wring it out first. That just seems like slightly too much work relative to whatever weird sexual gratification you'd get out of it. He even says something that sounds like he's about to really tell a story. In a saga of a few fellas, oh, what the hell? I guess I better tell ya. But the story they tell isn't really much more detailed than we met some hot chicks, then bought some stuff at a corner store before we smashed. And it's weird because the second verse starts off with them clearly at the hotel already. But then it sounds like he leaves the hotel with the girl to get some more shit at the store. Ah, okay, so, so you're just going to get more alcohol. And since he mentioned the acid at the bottom of the bottle, which is a reference to the harsher taste of the liquor in the last couple of sips when you don't shake it a little first, yeah, that means he's he's already drank a whole 40 and he's driving. Okay, well, that's not good. We got the kids, now we're heading for the hotel. You know, uh, when I was a kid and I heard rappers using telly all the time, I had no idea they were talking about a hotel. I thought they were talking about a television, like British people or something. Oh yeah, one of them is white, isn't he? 
I mean, when I first looked this up, I saw they were from Vallejo, California, so I just assumed they were both Latino, but nah, one of them isn't. Not that it informs the song or makes it any better or anything, it's just interesting to note when you first start watching the video and you just assume they're two white guys. That said, uh, the white rapper has the first two verses, with the Latino dude handling the third, but honestly, they sound just about as good as each other, and so it doesn't really end up making much of a difference. I mean, it's not like the other guy's doing a whole bunch of Cypress Hill Spanglish rapping or anything. Although they are partially responsible for bringing us Baby Bash, uh, that Latino rapper from the 2000s who had a couple of hits on him. Okay, now Rap Genius says they're saying new ka here, but no, dude, they're saying gotta get some new cot, like C O T, which was West Coast slang for pussy back then. That said, often people would say cock with a K at the end instead, which I think was people just doing that thing where you interchangeably say a word that sounds like another word because the unstressed final letter on both words sounds so similar you can barely tell the difference. Which, you know, hearing that mix up is personally hilarious to me because it means there were so many homophobic macho guy rappers in the 90s talking about how much cock they wanted to get. Like cock or cot? Like which one? did I say first? It's kind of hard to tell because of that super unstressed final consonant. Now here, Genius says this is them saying they're parked in a handicap spot because a sick one is a reference to people with ailments or disabilities, but like, wow, man, that's fucked up. They need those spaces. And they say they're doing it just in case they got to ride out real quick. And I mean, sure, their cars just might ride out real quick on a goddamn tow truck. So fucking good luck with that. Well, overall, I'm going to have to give this one a one out of five. It's just about banging hot chicks at a hotel, but there's nothing interesting or clever or funny that happens, so it just ends up feeling like a boilerplate garden variety 90s club rap song. And if their flows were a little more solid, I could give them props on that, but unfortunately, the lack of creativity with the raps and the sample really hinders the replayability of the track, and it makes for a bit of a hollow experience. Maybe it plugs in well as track number six on a 90s throwback playlist, but on its own, it probably only really does something for the people around Vallejo at the time who remember the names and the references they make. But other than that, it's just kind of an underwhelming track at the end of the day. Like, if you want to ruin Rump Shaker for your ears, sure, give it a listen, but outside of the region where they're from, th th there's no fun story, interesting lyrics, it's just an average guy rap joint that doesn't really have much going for it, sad to say. Well, that's the episode. And if you want to support the show, of course, that's ko-fi.com slash rapcritic for one-time donations where you can request live streams or reviews, and patreon.com slash rapcritic for ongoing payments where you can see episodes early, get half off on Kofi requests, and join the RC Discord to chat with me and fellow fans. And until next time, I'm the Rap Critic. You don't have to like my opinion, but I don't have to like your song.